tonight's second quarter final, the long haul of tightrope. The tall order of vertigo. The furious maul of hang tough. And an epic brawl on duel. But before all that action, meet your hosts, Jeremy Gaskett and Ulrika Johnson. to our quarter-final, which means we're one step closer to those prizes. Now, this year, our winners will each receive £1,000. <laughs> Plus, they'll drive away in one of these fabulous four-wheel drive utility vehicles brand new into the UK. Our runners up will also receive £1,000, plus we're jetting them off to the Atlantis Resort on Paradise Island in the Bahamas. So let's meet our quarter finalists. Tonight they are Pauline Schertz and Trudy Ballantyne. Track Centre in Edal in Derbyshire. So, you feeling good about tonight? Yeah, I'm a little bit more nervous than I was before, but... Um, because there is more at stake now. Oh, yeah, definitely. And there's more pressure on you to do well now. Before, it was just like, oh, get through the heat and have a good laugh, and now it's, oh, God. But, um, yeah, it's all right. Well, let's hope you won't be too nervous. Let's hear it for Pauline Shirt. Trudy, now, with you being a rugby player, after winning your heat, how much celebrating did you do? Um, I've only had two hangovers to get over. <laughs> Not too bad at all. Just remind us what you do and where you come from. I'm a musicist uh, from Edinburgh, but I'm originally from Buckinghamshire. What have you been doing in between time, between the heat and now? Any kind of training? Um, not really, just resting up and, as I said, getting over my hangovers. <laughs> Let's hope that the relaxing has done the job. Let's hear it for Trudy Ballantyne! And Colin Curran. And once again, what terrific support you've got there, Mark. Yeah, they've all come back down again. They've been rushing about, but they've managed to make it. They've had time off work. They're good lads. Now, what I want to know is, is Andy here tonight, your brother? Yeah, you'll find out he's here tonight. He'll be up front row somewhere. Now, of course, Andrew was with us last year, and is he delighted to have you go through to the quarterfinals? Yeah, I do believe so. I think deep down, Andrew's rooting for me just as much as everybody else is, yeah. Well, we'll look out for you and hope that you really do give it your best shot. Let's hear it for Mark Whitehouse. Colin, you're here in the quarterfinal. The final's just around the corner, not too far away. Yeah, but it's not, it's not too far away. Hopefully, if I play my cards right, I might be in this final. Just remind us, Colin, what you do and where you're from. Well, I'm a fitness instructor back at Belfast, and I also do wow. a bit of dancing, if you know what I mean. I think we might know what wow. you mean. Uh, well, how many people have you managed to bring over from Northern Ireland? Well, sadly, my mum and dad's not actually at this show, so if they're watching at home, I love you, mum and dad, I love you, Paul and Barry, and all the rest of my fans that sadly couldn't get here. But the rest, they're over here. Let's give it up for Colin Curran. Well, we met the girls and we met the guys, so let the quarterfinals begin. Our first female contender is Pauline. And she's facing Lightning. The Glamour Glad is 57 kilos, which, as everyone knows, is really nine stones. Pauline's shirt is 78 kilos, so naturally she's three stone, four pounds heavier. Three, two, one! This is a race of two halves. The first is the big pull up the tightrope, the second the quick slide down. Pauline's shirt will score ten if she's back to the button first. And Lightning has the edge, but Pauline showing great strength to stay with her. Change over. Lightning presses her down button and hooks up for the return journey. It comes... Oh, she's gone! She loses her grip on the pulley, and she's furious. And that leaves an easy slide to the finish for Pauline to claim those ten points. Her mum and dad, Linda and John, love it. Lightning, controlling the race, launches herself for the slide down, then simply loses her grip on the handlebar. Here's Pauline for the post-mortem. 
Pauline's only come. Uh, I thought, I thought that uh, your numbers were up there. So did I. How lucky was that? <laughs> very rare mistake from Lyman. You know, it's very rare she makes one, but thank God she did. Pauline, you scored ten points. <laughs> Our second female contender is Trudy. And she's up against Fox. Over to John Anderson. Oh, I wouldn't go back to that hairdresser. Trudy's never tackled the tightrope before in competition and struggling to get to grips with the technique required but staying on terms with Fox. In fact, she's got the edge as they approach the platform. But Fox quicker with the drop down, but it's still tight. Latches onto the T-bar firmly. It's going to be Fox who'll hit the bottom first and steal the glory. Ignition for Trudy. The anaesthetist goes under. It's enough to turn a brother's hair grey, which frankly would be a blessing. Brother Toby has plenty to say. Fox very fast on the changeover, which gave her the advantage on the return journey. So after that opening round, Pauline kicks off with a tenner. Trudy yet to score. Our first male contender is Mark. And he's facing Ace. Go Over on, to John Anderson. Go on, Contender! Go on, Ready. 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 Three, two, one. Just to remind you, Mark is an electrician with Doncaster Council, so he's familiar with heights and qualified to give the Ace a shock. Mark a live wire on the tightrope. Ace desperate not to be a waste of space. Fast changeover from both guys. Superb skills from Mark, considering he's never ridden the tightrope before. Who's going to hit the spot first? Oh, it's tighter than John Anderson's grip on a fiver. And it looked to be Ace who clinched it, but he's dropped off. Mark's daughter Emily doesn't know. Well, let's see it again. The angle is deceptive. It's whoever impacts the end cushion first. And it's Ace by a whisker. Yes, uh, over you come, mate. Mark absolutely flew up the rope there and I thought uh, no way is Ace going to win this one. Well funny enough I was watching him on my left as soon as that whistle went he was a good six foot in front of me and <laughs> I thought I was gone and especially when I dismounted again I had trouble getting the loops but I was hanging on through one finger down there. One Powerful finger. man. <laughs> Powerful finger. <laughs> Mark at one stage man you were cruising it. As I got to the far end and I pulled my thing I looked up for my hand for my grips and they were right at the back of me. I didn't realise that they were set back so far. And then I had to like stand up onto the little platform up there to reach them. Oh, never mind. Best. It was still a good contest. Let's give it up for Mark and Ace. How was this going, you know? He's fresh me up there. Our second male contender is Colum. And he's up against Cobra. Over to John Anderson. Ready! Weighing up the situation, Belfast-born Colum tips the scales at 73 kilos, which is 11 stone 7. Cobra will be pulling 92 kilos, also referred to as 14 stone 7. So Cobra has a 3 stones disadvantage. Colum, a tightrope novice, but you wouldn't think it to look at him go. Hands a blur on that wire. Cobra's got his work cut out here. Colum's lead to the platform enough to make the sneaky snake spit. Colum for the unhook. That lead looks unassailable. Cobra well behind at this point, and that means trouble for him. Colum on the slide to victory. Cobra desperate to get back at him, but it won't happen here. Colum wins it, hands down. Cobra's down too. Colum's girlfriend, Imelda, delighted. Well, in fairness, Cobra does eat into Colum's lead, but he's never been happy on this equipment. Sparkling performance from Colum as he joins Jeremy. Colum, an absolute tremendous start. Uh, that was never in doubt. <laughs> I'm very surprised. Yeah, how pleased you to have ten points! <laughs> I think Mum probably thinks it's fantastic. Cobra? Yes, Mr Springer. 
The music says it all, really. Well, I've been doing this for two years, and I try and try and try, and I'm sure the lads on the floor here keep putting me up there for a laugh. <laughs> Not at all. Let's give it up for Cobra and Cullum! Well, Cobra talks cobblers most of the time, but we all still love him. After one event, Mark remains on zero, Cullum scores ten. <laughs> at the foot of the wall, it's Pauline! She's going to be chased by Rebel! Oh, so getting ready to climb, it's Trudy! She's going to be pursued by Siren! And in case you're wondering what's going through Pauline's mind, here's a clue. Um, well, my opponent for quarterfinals is Trudy. Um, I've heard a lot about Trudy. In her first heat, she got um, 40 points. <laughs> she was 11 and a half seconds on a head start over Kate Rudd. Now, when I asked one of the girls, like, how did she do in her eliminator and stuff, she said that she, she did it quite fast and she went around it. But after 11 and a half seconds, Kate Rudd nearly caught her up and they came off the end of the balance being together. And if Kate can catch her up after 11 and a half seconds, I'm more or less convinced I'm going to get her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that clears that up. The referee whistles them up the wall. 50-foot sheer drop. First to the summit scores 10. Second will get five and a minute to do it in. Pauline in the pink, Trudy in yellow. Here come the glads. Rebel's after Pauline. And Trudy was caught by Rebel on her last wall climb, so she's grateful Simon's on her tail this time. Pauline climbing fast alongside the chimney. And Rebel's going like a rocket up that wall. Oh, she's got her! She's done it again, and Pauline's mum, Linda, devastated. Trudy's got the top of the wall inside. She's going to secure 10 points. Yes, great climb for Trudy. Trudy uh, look a bit happy with that climb. Oh, I'm very much happy with that climb. I got caught in the, in the first heat, but that was great. Siren was nowhere to be seen on the... Well, good news for you. Yeah, indeed. She couldn't keep up. She couldn't keep up. And Trudy scores 10 points! <laughs> and he did that all by himself. Two events gone, and a review of the scores reveals both girls have 10. He's mine. Also He's coming down. The climb. It's Colum. He's going to be chased by Hunter. There he is. Hey, how's that chesty cough, Hunter? Ah, still got it, huh? Here's what Mark really thinks of his opponent. I've drawn Colum in the quarterfinals, and I've grown quite fond of Colum. We've been hanging about together through the uh, training week, and he's very sharp. I've watched him on his games. He's not the biggest of the contenders. But he's very committed, he gives 150% in all the games. He's actually value for money. And I do believe that we will both be out there to win and we will give it his best shot. Mark's an experienced wall star, scored 10 against Cobra last time out. This is Colum's first competition climb. Mark in red, Colum in blue, the glads are released. Hunter doesn't even touch the wall to bring Colum down. Imelda, well, being Imelda really. Now it's all about Saracen and Mark. The head start cut to seven seconds in the quarterfinals, but it makes no difference to Mark. He's up and over. I did you follow with any of the handholds there? <laughs> and it's like you were Spider-Man and just clambered your way out there. I could hear Saracen at the back of me psyching himself up. I thought, I can't give in to this. I've got to focus and concentrate again. I just went for it. I didn't really look at any handholds. I just thought, next one that comes, it's mine. Keep moving, keep moving. And I just managed to... Pull it off. Mark, you did the job, you flew out there and you scored 10 points! Woo! Oh, Sarah, you look very disappointed. I did, I mean, um, they've cut the time down to seven seconds, even though he was, he was magnificent on that wall. There was nothing I could do. I only got halfway up and he was already over and he got his 10 points. I mean, what can I say? He was excellent. He certainly was. And Colm, a bit of bad luck there, it seemed. Well, it can't all go my way, you know, that's where the show goes. I just slipped and he was right behind me, so I was so nervous that I couldn't actually maintain that concentration, so... Well, it must be very difficult to psych yourself up for a game like this, and then it's over in two seconds. Yeah, it's a really horrible way to win that nothing to climb the wall, but there's plenty more events to go, so hopefully I'll uh, get some more points, so we'll be a great eliminator in the end. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's hear it for Saracen, Colm and Hunter. Two events down, three to go. Mark levels the scores just like the girls, ten apiece. Said plenty more events to come, so join us after the break for more action here on Gladiators. The Gladiators. The Gladiators. Welcome back to.
to the home of Gladiators, where we're ready to kick off with our next event. Our first female contender is Pauline. And she's facing Rio. Over to John Anderson. Contender! Vertigo is all about pole position. If Pauline can traverse all five poles and win, she'll find herself in a ten points better off position. Pauline climbing pole one strongly. She transfers from pole to pole by swinging the top and leaning towards the next one. Rio second up. Pauline already swinging. Big lean across to top pole two. Great lead for Pauline. Rio leans to her second pole. She's going to really have to start throwing her weight around now. Pauline's on to pole three. Her dad, John, a tower of strength with his support. Rio again tries for three, and this time grabs hold, but it's a stretch that'll bring tears to your eyes. Pauline's on to pole five, these points are hers, and no mistake, just needs to swing to the ring to get the whole thing done. Come on now, she's there! Great vertigo from Pauline. Dad and Mum, John and Linda, rather pleased with that. Pauline's happy as well, and Rio far from it. A bad day at the office. Pauline had a massive two-pole lead over Rio and grabbed her reward. Pauline, lots of smiles, lots of screaming, lots of woo! You are obviously very pleased with that performance. Definitely, definitely. Um, I, I chose lightning in this, and she's hurt herself, so um, you put Rio in, and I thought, yeah, right, she's a heavy girl, she'll get the swing, and... But I got it. You certainly got it, plus you got 10 points! <laughs> Next up is Trudy! <laughs> and she's facing Rebel! <laughs> Over to John Anderson. Contender! Unlike Pauline, this will be Trudy's first time on the poles, and Trudy will be looking to gain herself a 100% pole record like Pauline. She's drawn Rebel, and that's bad news to begin with. Rebel, already an experienced pollster, at the top of one. Just has the edge on Trudy. Trudy gets it going as Rebel moves to two. John Anderson asking her to swing her pole back before making the move. Rebel working her pole well onto three. And Trudy can't get off her first. Well, now she's there. Rebel slips across to pole four, makes it look so very easy. Brother Tom in the green hair, swinging with her. Trudy moves to pole three. She'll score a point for every pole she completes. Rebel is just a swing away from victory. Takes the ring and registers the win. Trudy stuck on pole three. She'll score two points. Trudy's brothers Toby and Dick want her to finish. She's on to pole five, a great effort, but to little avail. Working hard to get the job done. And at long last, she gets there. Tom's now got a hand the same colour as his hair. Absolutely huge congratulations. That looked very, very easy indeed. What can I say? You ain't got nothing if you ain't got that swing! And you've got it, what a rebel! <laughs> Trudy, not all is lost. She still managed to get two points out of that, but I mean, Rebel flew across. She did, didn't she? As uh, she said, I haven't got that swang fang. <laughs> <laughs> swang fang. There's, there's still a few more events to uh, catch up the points. You, you're still obviously very confident. Yeah, I'm just going to keep at it. I've got to keep chasing Pauline. She's good, but she's got to be better. OK, let's give it up for Trudy! After three events, Pauline adds 10 to total 20, and Trudy adds two to make 12. <laughs> Ten in the guys' competition, they'll add two points to their totals for every goal they score. It's a case of stretching the bungee and making it bounce to grab the balls from the platform. Colm strikes Wolf's bungee. Bad luck. Takes another ball, throws and scores, as does Mark. Mark with another shot, no score. Mark loading both barrels. First one misses. 
Colm with another. Good lob, clears Wolf to score. 4-2 to Colm. 14-12 overall. Colm more accurate than Mark by any stretch of the imagination. Less than half a minute. Colm shoots, parried by Wolf. Mark fast on the uptake, but once he's got a ball, he fails to do much with it. That's more like it. Ace has conceded four, Wolf has conceded six. Mark again. Plenty of speed and firepower, but his aims too frequently let him down. Oh, but not that time. Mark again, two more. Now he's got his eye in, and he's rubbing Ace's nose in it. Colin with a last-ditch attempt, but that's how the scores will stay. Mark with eight points, Colin with six. Mark's son, Elliot, delighted with the win. Mark signals four goals. There's the evidence. Column's laid-back approach paid dividends with six points. So after three events, Mark's up to 18, Column's just two points behind. Time now for our next event. Our first female contender is Pauline. And she's facing Vogue. Vogue about to face one of her strongest ever contenders. to John Anderson. Contender ready! Ada ready! Three, two, one! Pauline needs to reach the platform Vogue's leaving if she wants to add 10 points to a score. If she finishes the 60 seconds of allotted swing time while hanging on to a red ring, she'll score five. Pauline out of harm's way at the moment, Vogue coming across. 20-year-old Pauline doesn't actually work out in the gym. She gets all the tough exercise she needs in her job as head groom and working on her parents' farm. Vogue locks on. Now we'll see if the time Pauline spends mucking out is going to pay dividends. She pulls for the national tug of war team. Now she's beginning to realise how the rope must feel. Pauline carrying a combined weight of nearly 20 stones on those arms. Still more than 20 seconds to hang tough. Pauline holding a red ring, which means she'll score five if she stays the distance, but there's a long way to go yet. It's remarkable strength and determination from the Derby to last that she's still there. It's been many a long season since we've seen a contender tough it out like this. And Vogue is trying every trick in the book. She hasn't a hope of shifting Pauline with her body weight. A superb example of sheer brute strength. Five points the hard way. Drops down with Vogue still on her back. Mum and Dad thrilled by that incredible performance, but I think Pauline's in trouble. She took a bad landing with Vogue still hanging to her. The medics have been summoned. And this drama is relentless. Dad John concerned. Dr Adrian Noon is the physician in attendance. Pauline is smiling, but she's still on her back. What bad luck. Sister Julie clearly upset by this, and the family awaiting the doctor's assessment. And a bad time for Pauline's mum, Linda, as Pauline is transferred to the stretcher. If we look at the replay, I think that most of the damage has been done with all that weight, that combined weight pulling on her neck. And I don't think it's the landing. If we check out the landing, Vogue lands on her feet, and Pauline seems to have landed OK there. What a tragedy. One of the best contenders we've ever had on Gladiators is now wheeled off to the emergency room. But she's still brave, she smiles and waves, the crowd appreciates it. And as always on Gladiators, we'll give you an update on her condition before the end of the show. Our second female contender is Trudy. And she's facing Siren. Here's the Siren, all 70 kilos of her. That's 11 stone weight-wise. Her opponent is Trudy Ballantyne. Trudy's 67 kilos, which translated into English means she's half a stone lighter. Siren with a score to settle, and Trudy knows it. Trudy took 10 off Siren on the wall earlier this evening, so Siren's in no mood to concede any more to the Edinburgh-based anaesthetist. Trudy electing to go down the right wing, but that way leads to trouble. Siren takes her on the back swing. Trudy one ring, look like Siren's got a revenge. Just under 20 seconds, Trudy forced fed a face full of match. Her supporters just grateful she's in one piece. Trudy, um, that was all over very quick. 
Well, to tell you the truth, I'm just happy to get from one ring to the next. So it's very difficult, that game. Why is that not one of your favourites? No, I'm afraid it's not. I don't have the strength of Pauline. <laughs> the strength of Pauline. Uh, Siren, wow, you've won. <laughs> Don't sound, so, don't sound so surprised, Jeremy. Of course, you know you're always going to win. I'm actually starting to quite enjoy that game. I think I've found myself on the rings. Oh, thanks very much. Let's give it up for Siren and Trudy. After four events, Pauline 25, Trudy 12. Still no news of Pauline. We'll bring it to you as soon as we get it. Our first male contender is Mark. And he's against the one and only Saracen. Sarah's been here since it all started, and he's still doing the business. Looks the business as well. 111 kilos at 17 and a half stones of solid Saracen, swinging against Mark, who's 79 kilos, five stones lighter than Sarah. Saracen will be looking to emulate Siren's victory because Sarah conceded 10 points to Mark on the wall. Saracen, a takedown specialist when it comes to ring work, but Mark's proved he has a head for heights, coupled with a cool, analytical brain. Sarah weighing up the situation before making a move, and that was a wrong move. Mark still short of the scoring zone, figuring out his next move. Oh, but Sarah looks like he's going to make it for him. Oh, Sarah locks on Mark high with the feet. Sarah got his hands full with this tough customer, but he's not about to let go of that vest. Sarah's got the front of Mark's vest, but can't get his legs into a takedown position. Mark wriggling to get free like a worm on a hook. Sarah keeping him out of the scoring zone. By any stretch of the imagination, that's incredible. Just glad it's Mark's vest and not his skin. Ah, oh, Sarah lets go to spare Mark's blushes, I think. Less than 10 seconds, but Mark's still nowhere near the scoring zone, so even when he hears the time-up hooter, he'll have no points for his trouble. But it's down to great defending from Sarah. Sarah's out of there. Mark two. Sarah keeps Mark out of the points. Mark's mum and daughter not happy about this at all. Sarah cops a mouthful from Emily. Mark, you've got much of your clothes left, your uniform there. It did fit at one time, it did fit perfect. <laughs> Let's give it up for Sarah and Mark. <laughs> that was close, close. Our second male contender is Colm. And he's up against Hunter. Hunter, one of the brightest stars in the Gladiator galaxy. But here's what Colm thinks about being here. In this round, I am dreading it because I'm actually up against my mate, Mark Whitehouse. He's been my pal from the very first day of training. Uh, I just took to him like duck to water. He's brilliant joke teller, he's good fun. Uh, and uh, sadly, I had to actually meet him in this round. But win or lose, I hope uh, we we'll remain friends and I won't actually see him after this show. Three, two, one. Hunter had it easy on the wall against Colm earlier, but this is going to be tougher. He knows that last time out on the rings, Colm scored five against the Wolfman, and a score against Wolfie is no mean feat, and it galls me to have to admit that. Hunter patrolling the edge of the scoring zone, looking to hang a left, makes his move on Colm. Colm just out of reach. Hunter will make contact on the next swing. Colm with his legs high. Hunter gets a piece of vest. Hope this one doesn't rip. John Anderson's only got time to sew one best to show. Hunter's low on the leg, less than half a minute to go. Colin wiping Hunter's nose with the sole of his shoe. Where does he get the strength from? Keeping Hunter up. Oh! Hunter's gone! Taking Colin's back brace with him. The buckle must have shattered under the pressure. Colin now with 11 seconds to reach Hunter's platform and secure 10 points. Colin's going nowhere. Clearly content to hang about and let the time pass. So at least he'll bank five points. The Belfast fitness instructor kept the hunter at bay, worth a handful of points in anyone's bank. Imelda delighted. Here comes David and Goliath for the interrogation. Hunter, uh, just tell us how Colm just managed to slip out of your grasp. Yeah, well, they, uh, they make us wear all his safety gear, which is obviously uh, needed for the event. And uh, I got hold of his back brace, and I was holding on to that, and uh, the buckle just came loose. So I ended up eating Matt. He's seeing Matt Collin. Five points, baby! Hunter! My mum's not going to be 
be pleased about this, I'm telling you. I think your mum's gonna be pleased about it, boy. Point sign. Let's give it up for Colum and Hunter. The boy hung tough. He certainly did. Mark's on 18, Colum's on 21 as we move on to the next event. Tough. We've sent her to hospital for precautionary reasons because, of course, here on Gladiator, safety's first and winning comes second. And on this occasion, we bring in our substitute. And our substitute tonight is Tara Layden with the fastest eliminator out of our substitute. So, Tara, just tell everybody at home what you're doing, where you're from. I'm a retail assistant and I'm from Western Supermare. Now, you'll adopt Pauline's points and you'll hopefully as well adopt Pauline's supporters because, of course, we want to see a good competition now. Now, you've got to go off and get ready for Duel, which is the last event, and then waiting just around the corner is the Eliminator. So let's hear it for Tara! You may remember Tara only just lost out to Pauline in the heat, so she's a good replacement. She faces Rio, 79 kilos, 12 stone 7. Tara Layden, the girl who puts the super into Western Supermare. She's 70 kilos, that's 21 pounds lighter. Contender! Well, Tara certainly didn't think she'd find herself on a pugil platform when she woke up this morning. Rio with the first strike. Tara's rocked, but she manages to recover. Talk about in at the deep end. Poor old Tara being knocked from pillar to post with Rio's stick. Oh, she's gone! And who can blame her? Rio dispatches Tara with six or seven of her finest wax. Rio stings her with an opening salvo, which Tara does well to ride, but in the end, Rio's relentless stick work took its toll, and Tara's balance deserted her. Next up, it's Trudy! And she's facing Rebel! In her heat, Trudy was a point-scoring powerhouse. Here's what she had to say about that. In my show, I got 40 points, which is an all-time record for the ladies. Um, it's just excellent. It was so, such fun scoring in it, nearly every game um, and sets you up so well for the Eliminator that it makes it easier. Not easy, but easier. Someone's been busy with the coloured pencils. And it's Trudy's first engagement on the duel, and she couldn't have drawn a tougher opponent than Rebel. Ten points if he knocks the Gladiator off her perch, five if she stays the distance for the draw. As an anaesthetist, she should know how to put Rebel's lights out, and she's doing a great job absorbing everything Rebel can throw at her. Excellent dueling from both girls. Rebel's going to have to pull out something special if she's going to win this. Less than ten seconds. Rebel looks to have given her best, and it's not enough. Trudy's a mauler and a brawler when she needs to be. Five points the hard way. Huge relief on Trudy's face. Rebel commends her dueling skills, and Trudy can't believe it as her fans celebrate. Right up to the hooter, Trudy was putting together some classy combinations and defending with tenacity, parrying the best that Rebel could offer. So, after five events, Pauline's deputy, Tara, on 25, Trudy's on 17. So we now move into the men's event with Mark! And he's facing Vulcan! Mark giving away five stones to the beady-eyed Bushman, so it's going to be tough. Oh, Vulcan lets one go, and Mark recoils in horror. Vulcan wins hands down. Mark's down as well in 2.6 seconds. The awesome Antipodean maintains his undefeated dueling record. Mark's brother Andrew, a wry smile. Competition at all, really? I did actually have a plan, believe it or believe it not. I thought if I do it first one and let let the second one go, but as he caught me with the first one and the second one came across 18 stone, it's difficult to move. Absolutely. What can you do? And I have to say, some excellent work there by you, Vulcan. Yeah, I know that. I know that. I'm gonna say, my grandmother hits harder than you, man. You're gonna go to the gym and practice and all that. Vulcan doesn't mince his words, he just minces contenders. She doesn't mince her words either. Next up on Duel, it's Colm! And he's facing Wolf! Over to John Anderson. Contender, ready! Ready, go, ready! 
The Hound is definitely up for this. Column scored 10 when they last faced each other across the usual platforms and both straight to work. Ball smashing into him. Incredible punishment, but Colum somehow is weathering it. Explosive action from Wolf, giving it everything. Oh, and Wolf has gone straight out the back door. What a remarkable victory for Colum. Unbelievable. Wolf was there, and then suddenly he wasn't. Imelda's was ecstatic. I stepped back, he didn't hit me. Oh, so you're giving him no credit at all for that victory? I beat myself, I stepped backwards. Well, then you're a bigger fool than I thought you were. Let's just have a word with the wee man that can. Well, I don't know. Wolf knows a crack. Did you step back? Yeah. yeah he did I slip. I go with that, but I still won. Thanks for the 10 points. Hey, all credit goes to this man. Doesn't Wolfie know it? After five events, Mark stays on 18, Colin moves up to 31. So that's the game's out of the way. All that remains is the eliminator. Remembering, of course, that at stake is two places in the semi-finals. Join us after the break here on Gladiators. Eliminator time. Now, in the women's event, Trudy's on 17 points, Tara's on 25. That's an eight point difference, giving Tara a four second head start. Over to Jeremy. Tara, you've got a, a four second uh, lead, and you know, it's the second bite of the cherry. You've really got to make it count, haven't you? I certainly have. Uh, four and a half seconds is basically nothing in this game because anything can happen, but I will do my best. Trudy, four seconds with a semi final at stake. I suppose you're going to catch that up in no time. I'm going to be chasing her, going to be on her back. <laughs> OK. If you go over to the start, I'll see you at the other end. Over to John Anderson. Tara, you will go on my first whistle. Trudy, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Tara Layden, supermarket assistant from Western Supermare, deputising for Pauline Shirt. Here comes Trudy Valentine, the Edinburgh anaesthetist. Trudy's fastest eliminator time, 1 minute 40 seconds. Tara's a minute 43. And Trudy already eating into Tara's four-second advantage. Tara up and over the top. This must be so tough for her. Coming in cold at the very last minute. Turns to the rope, legs up and pushes away. The curse of the rope strikes again. Trudy with better luck. Trudy's quarter, now the race is really on. The struggle up the road proved tough for them both, but Trudy's come off best. And as Gladiator fans will know, once you've had a go at this rope and not quite got to grips with it, the lactic acid starts to set in, making it tougher. Brothers Toby and Dick are on the feet. Trudy's on the trapeze, makes the changeover, and here's what's ahead of her. Still no sign of Tara. Trudy under no pressure, climbing steadily. Tara on the ladder, in trouble. Surely she can... Oh, she's plunged into the Valley of Lost Souls. And Andrew Norgate will hold Tara there for 10 seconds. He's got the luckiest job in the arena. Bet Tara's wondering what else can go wrong. Trudy tops the cargo net. Andy times the penalty. Now she's off. Tara climbs the ladder as Trudy scoops the zip line. Flying splash down there. Will the graveyard spook her out and give Tara the chance to get back into the race? Tara with the swing, makes it. Trudy on the seesaw, she can afford to take her time and ensure she makes no mistakes. Toby and Dick giving it plenty. Trudy, focused and clear about what she's got to do. The Travelator will be her final test, sprints up the rolling road with energy to spare. Trudy Valentine into the semi-finals of Gladiators. Mum, Pooh and Sister Polly stand to acclaim her victory as do the Brothers Grimm. Great characters. Tara speeding towards the crash mat. Legs up for the impact. Spectacular landing turns to face the final curtain, the graveyard shift. Two seesaws and a travelator from home. John Anderson giving the direction, but I doubt she'll get lost. 20 minutes ago, she had her feet up watching the show. Now she's in it. Second seesaw, the crowd getting right behind her. Well, nearly all of them. Tara on the Travelator, powers away to the top. Tara Layden, game contender under tough circumstances. Gives it large. Semi-finals! Yes! I've 
How does that feel? Oh, it feels very good. Very good indeed. Four seconds, I think, was quite a lot of time to make up. Yeah, I seemed to overtake her on the rope um, and didn't look back. How much fun have you had? Oh, excellent. So much fun. And you've got to come back for more. Oh, more and more and more. <laughs> you've been great. Well done for getting through to the semi final. Let's hear it for Trudy Valentine. you to come in during the last event and then to come in cold almost to do the eliminator. Yeah, I've been on there. Everything seemed to go wrong this time. Last time I did the eliminator, it went great. I did everything quite smooth. Didn't make a mistake, really. This time, my hands just slipped off the uh, overhead ladder. I couldn't get a good rope. But I've just been glad for another chance. I've had a great time. And uh, thanks, Pauline supporters, they're giving me a bit of support. I really need a bit. Let's hear the draw! Well, there's no one who wouldn't feel for Tara right now. Trudy with a smile that says it all. Battled brilliantly tonight. Her ticket to the semi-final booked and confirmed. Accepts the congratulations of her supportive family. Hug from Mum Poo. And here's another heroine going to the shirt family. Pauline sister Julie with a consolation hug. In the ladies' contest for the fastest eliminator, Trudy's time was way outside the existing record of a minute 35.2 set by Jane Smith. The men's contest, Column's 13-point lead converts to a six-and-a-half-second lead at the start of the eliminator. Second person. Three, two, one. Colin Curran, fitness instructor from Belfast, his last eliminator completed in a minute and 34 seconds. On to the next before Mark Whitehouse is released. Mark, the street lighting electrician from Doncaster. Mark's fastest eliminator recorded at a minute 23, so Mark is quicker, but Colin's head start could make all the difference. Column to the rope, hauls his way up. Mark throws himself over the top of the net, desperate to pull back that lead second by second. Column on the bike, clicks the pedals into gear. Mark makes short work of the rope. Column struggling with his bike work. Mark begins his pedaling. Mark's wife, Carol, on her feet. It's agony to watch. Column swings the Death Valley. Net climb ahead, and Melda wants more work from Column. Mark finishes with the bike. He'll trapeze to the net and try to catch Column on the climb. Carroll knows how close he is. Column's lead reduced big time, but he'll be first to the gantry. Imelda speechless. There's a rarity. Column to the zip line. Mark losing time again on the net. Column sliding to the crash match. Anything can happen in the next half a minute. Mark is down, knows he can still pull this off. Column to the first seesaw. He's fast, he's agile. And he's, oh, he takes a terrible fall off there. Recovers for the second seesaw. Mark gaining very fast. Here's where it's won or lost. A semi-final place is at stake. It's neck and neck. Oh, yeah, Column's gone, and Mark's gone. This is incredible drama. Carol nearly collapsed. Column firing up for another whack. He's digging in, but his legs, they're going, they're gone. Imelda mortified. Mark with a second bite of the cherry. This is for glory and a place in the semis. He's going nowhere. He's going backwards. The power is gone. It's time to dig deep into the courage bank. Although both guys look like they're more than overdrawn. Column hoping for third time lucky. No one can bear to look. This is an astonishing eliminator. Here they go, both guys have recharged the batteries. Column and Mark together, Mark's gone again. Crumples on the belt, and Column's thrown into reverse. The tension's unbearable. I've got a migraine. Mark trying to find something that isn't there. And back into reverse. Brother Andrew knows the agony. Get to bed, mate. Make sure you get it right this time. Head up. Big strides. I've never seen ready. anything like this. Who'll dare to try first? It's Colum. This looks promising. He's going. He's there. He crossed the top lip and finally makes it. Colum Curran into the semi-finals of Gladiators. Get yourself ready. The pain shows in his face. This is the important one, though. 
everybody is winning him on. Mark attacks it with renewed vigour, grits his teeth and tames the Travelator in style. A brave performance from Mark Whitehouse. He conquers the Travelator. He's finally there, swings in. Colin, you're very, very emotional. What does this all mean to you? This is just a dream. Yes. You just don't know what this means to me. Every time I run up the trouble later, it's being so close to my dream and seeing Mark run up before me and me standing there at the bottom. My heart's sinking and my feet. Something inside just made me go for it. Go, because my mum said, go for it. And it's not over until it's over. But it's sure been worth it, hasn't it? Oh, this is, this is heaven. This is so good. I can't believe it. <laughs> you can't believe it. It's so good. You're through to the semi-final. Let's hear it for Colin Curran. Well, Mark, I have to say, that certainly provided us with the most exciting eliminator yet. And if only you could have seen the faces of your family, your brother, your wife, I mean, they were almost in tears. It was just so exciting and it was so heartrending. Uh, Only all six seconds could be caught. I felt it with all mine. I could catch him. But you nearly did. I mean, you got to the same spot at the same time, but at the end of the day, the travelator is the killer. I gave it everything I could. I don't like to disappoint people, but I gave it my best shot and I'm very grateful that everybody came on. Listen, you have not been a disappointment. You got through to the quarterfinals. Everybody's been here egging you on like crazy. And it's been great to have you on the show. Let's... Oh. I'd like to just say a big, big thank you to my wife, Carol, who throughout all this has put all her things to one side and helped me out. Without you, love, I couldn't have even started it, so thank you. Well, that was a nail-biter right to the end. It's all too much for little Elliot. Holm can hardly walk, I can hardly talk, but there he is. Amelda, the first to congratulate him. Give a chance, Amelda, he still needs some air, mate. Mark, the gallant runner-up. The White House family reunion, he gave his all. Absolutely. If you want more thrills, more spills, join us next week here on Gladiators! For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. Contenders, ready! Gladiators, ready! So get yourselves ready. Tea, poof, festive biscuit selection. There's more Gladiators new and next on Challenge. Right, left and front.